If you're using a mirrorless camera to do your photography, I'm here to give you my photo settings that will get you the illest shots every single time. Now it's 10 million different ways to skin a cat, but these mirrorless cameras now, whether you're shooting Sony, Canon, Fuji, it's kind of all the same across the board. So these settings apply not only to Sony, but they apply to Canon cameras. They apply to every camera under the sun that does photography. And I'm gonna help you get better with your photography. So once I switch my dial to photo mode, you get my settings, right? In this, I'm only gonna be focused on that exposure triangle. Your shutter speed, your f-stop and your ISO. And I might even touch on white balance a little bit because believe it or not, white balance and exposure is your two best friends when it comes to photography. It's not like settings when you come to video because video, you kind of leave things the same and you just kind of tweak things a little bit. But with photography, depending on if you have a moving subject or if you want to get a shallow depth of field to do certain things, these numbers that I'm about to tell you, you got to play with them a lot to find your sweet spot. But I found my sweet spot in a lot of situations. As I always say, I'm a man that shoots wide open. <laughs> I like my things open, open, pause that, but I like my stuff open, so I always have my lenses. My lenses go up to a 2.8, and nine times out of 10, depending on how sunny it is, it's always gonna be at a 2.8. My shutter speed, that depends as well, but nine times out of 10, my shutter speed is always between one over 100 and one over 160. I feel like that gets me my tack sharp shots when people are moving and you could Bust a move and you'll still get the shot in focus because these things are beasts when it comes to focus. So like I said, my shutter speed always stays at about one over 100 or one over 160, depending on the range. Now ISO, this is where it gets a little tricky. My ISO ranges depending on what environment I'm in. If I'm in a lowly lit space, my ISO is going up, cranking that bad boy up. But if I'm outside and a lot of light is coming in, I may crank it down to about 100 or 200, depending on the scene. So you have to play with that ISO to know where you really wanna get it. But my rule of thumb is, if you're in a dark area, you crank it up. If you're in an area with a lot of light, I bring it down. So that's totally based on you. But those are the settings that I use to get my stuff right. My last thing we're gonna talk about white balance. It's kind of funny because I did a video about video settings and I said I like to use the Kelvin. When it comes to photography now, I'm on a different range. I like to just kind of throw it in auto sometimes and see the best you could get when you're in a run and gun situation. But if you need that control, I highly suggest learn your Kelvin rates and really learn how to white balance because that changes your image. But when you're shooting raw, to me it don't matter, you can fix it in post, but that's just something, you ain't hear that from me. Knowing your settings is the best way to get in the best images out of your camera. Comment down below some of your go-to settings for photography, and we can talk about it. I'll catch y'all in the next one.